Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome dear learners this is a video for the subject of education for the course of bachelor's in education and for the paper of educational technology part 2 this video lecture is based on emerging technologies and issues in educational technology and in this lecture the topic of discussion is robert garnes nine events of instruction this video lecture is recorded by dr iram khan the course coordinator and the presenter of this video is dr iram khan from jamia millia islamia new delhi the academic expert or the reviewer of this video is professor jaseem ahmed from jamia millia islamia new delhi this video is produced under the project dth swayam prabha channels of ministry of education government of india hello my dear students i am dr iram khan assistant professor at institute of advanced studies in education faculty of education jamia millia islamia new delhi today we are going to have a discussion on the topic related to the emerging technologies and issues in educational technology and the topic of today is related to robert garnes nine events of instruction so let us start the discussion first with the objectives the objectives of this session are to discuss the nine events of instruction given by robert garnes and to elaborate the nine events of instruction along with the techniques to accomplish the steps of these nine events of instruction given by robert garnay so robert garnay was an educational psychologist who created a nine step process called the events of instruction garnay was born in the year 1916 this particular method or the model which garnay has created also called as the events of instruction basically it is very much relevant even today this method or model centers around how people process information how the practitioners in the fields uh, as diverse as the engineering field or in healthcare follow the systematic structured approach to teaching and particularly the people are called as the performers in this uh, a uh, method or model of uh, robert garnay so this uh, nine events of uh, instruction model helps the trainers the educators and the instructional designers to structure their training sessions in a very proper way the model is a systematic process that helps uh, all these people to develop various type of strategies and they can create the activities for instructional classes the nine events basically provide a framework for an effective learning process and each step addresses a form of communication that supports the learning process when we uh, see through all those uh, steps each step is completed then learners are much more likely to be engaged and to uh, a kind of uh, Uh, retaining or retention of the information or skills uh, is actually possible uh, to be found once one step is actually over so what we can see that after the completion of every single step we can find a kind of more engaged learner the retention of the information and skills uh, which are taught are seen to be more the steps essentially give the designers an outline or the prototype to to be used prior to performing the teaching or training activities so in this lecture we will be discussing in detail all these nine events of instruction and how they are performed and also what are the useful and uh, maybe some of the limitations also uh, all these things will be properly discussed here in this session as already mentioned that garnes nine events of instructions are actually divided into nine type of instruction the name itself uh, denotes so let us first see that what are these nine events what are the names of these nine events and then in due course of the lecture we will be discussing all these events one by one in detail so the first and foremost uh, 
step or event is gaining attention. Then we have got informing learners regarding the objectives. The third step or the third event is stimulating recall of prior learning. The fourth step is presenting the stimulus. The fifth is providing learning guidance. The sixth event is eliciting performance. Then seventh is providing feedback. Then at the eighth uh, event, we do the accessing of the performance. And the ninth event is related to enhancing retention and transfer. Basically, it is related to the generalization. Before learning the details of the events of instruction, we also have to see that what are those conditions of learning in which all these nine events can be performed. If we try to see that how Ghani has uh, described the steps, he has written a book and uh, the book is uh, known as the conditions of learning. And in this particular book, Ghani has identified the mental conditions for learning. And these mental conditions were based on the information processing model that focuses on the cognitive events that occur when the learners are presented with a stimulus. When we talk about uh, a little bit ahead, Ghani's nine events of instruction are connected to and also they address the conditions of learning. Robert Gane divides the conditions into two groups. The first group is internal and the next is external. The internal conditions are the already established learned capabilities of the learner. So whatever is already learned by the learner that comes under the first condition. Basically what the learner knows prior to the instruction because we all know that learning is considered to be the manifestation of whatever is already inside the learner. So basically the first condition is uh, to be taken care of that what exactly the learner knows prior to giving the instruction. The next is the external conditions. This deal with the stimuli that is presented externally to the learner what exactly it means basically the instruction which is provided to the learner at the time of the learning process so these conditions of learning are essential to Ghani's events of instruction when we see the model of uh, Ghani basically this model allows the instructional designers to consider the possible internal and the external condition that have an effect on the learning process. So basically the model uh, allows and it provides opportunities to see that where the internal uh, conditions are uh, working and where the external conditions can work. So the possibility of uh, the, uh, the balance between the two is actually seen here in this model given by Ghani. Further, the nine events of instruction uh, given by Robert Ghani can also be divided into three segments. Three categories or segmentation can be done. The first three steps, initial first step, uh, three steps. The first one is the gaining attention. Second one is informing learners of the objective. And then the third one is stimulating recall of prior learning. These three come under the preparation segment when the instruction is being prepared. Then comes the uh, next four instructions or uh, the events. Basically, these four steps here, the uh, step number four, which is presenting the stimulus. Then next is providing learning guidance, then eliciting performance and then the next one, which is providing feedback. These four steps come under the segment or the broader category of instruction and practice. And after that, the, the remaining two steps come under the category of assessment and transfer. 
and these two steps are assessing performance and enhancing retention and transfer so in this way we can uh, broadly categorize or divide the nine events of instruction so let us try to make an elaborate description of uh, all the events the nine events of uh, instruction given by robert garnet and the first event is gaining attention and this event begins with the learning session and how basically by uh, the means of gaining the attention of the learners and here we also try to ensure that the learners are motivated enough to learn and participate in the activities by presenting a stimulus to gain their attention so basically we are uh, as an instructor we are always trying to keep uh, the motivation level of the learners up this can be accomplished by presenting the learners with an introductory activity that engages the learner it can be anything so if uh, we are starting with a story or any activity or anything which can be uh, inclining the learners towards us or motivates the learner towards the learning which is going to be imparted that can be categorized under the category of gaining attention uh, let us have a look on those techniques which are used for gaining the learners attention so the first technique can be or the first uh, way in which we can gain the learners attention can be to stimulate learners with novelty or surprise or making uh, some sort of uh, uh, activities or things which can surprise the learner then we can pose through a uh, different type of uh, very kind of uh, active or uh, um, interesting questions then the learners can be uh, answering these questions and uh, they can also uh, be inclined towards asking questions to the other uh, learners and the other learners can uh, give answers to the questions asked by the, their peer group then by presenting an intriguing problem if we pose a problem which is somehow very interesting and they have to solve the problem uh, spontaneously then also it can be a, an um, activity which which is used for enhancing the attention then presenting a new and interesting situation that can pro provoke the curiosity of the learners uh, that can be a important technique to gain the attention and the, pr uh, the presentation of meaningful and relevant uh, uh, challenging tasks in front of the uh, students can also be somehow uh, an effort towards gaining attention so this is the first step and the foremost step which is uh, considered or which is the part of the nine events of uh, robert garnet's events of instruction so after gaining attention the second step is regarding the informing of learners related to the objectives so what happens basically once we are done with the uh, gaining of the attention we inform the learners that what exactly are the learning objectives and this is for the sake of helping them to understand that what they will be learning in due course of the session here we try to state uh, or make it very much clear to the learners that what will be the various uh, outcomes or accomplishments which they are going to get during the session and how they will be able to use the knowledge in their future so basically whatever is to be taught is informed to the learners and this allows the learners to organize their thoughts on what they will learn and help uh, to place all these um, uh, thoughts and uh, the the arrangements and organizations of their thoughts in a very proper manner basically the students are trying to make a proper mindset in terms of the learning process how we can actually go ahead and make the uh, this process of informing learners of the objectives done what can be the techniques through which we can impart this uh, this particular event so what we can do we can describe what the learners will be able to do at the completion of the session we can also describe uh, the 
performance sets or the skill sets which are required for the accomplishment of uh, the entire instruction process. We can also describe the criteria for the standard performance and we can explain how the learning will benefit them or how the learning is going to make a difference in their, uh, their lives. Basically, how it is going to make uh, them more accomplished. So this one is the second step, which comes after the first step, which is gaining attention. The third step or the third event is stimulating recall of prior learning. We've already uh, seen that the learning process is somehow the manifestation of already learned knowledge or whatever the learner is having already. So this uh, particular step or event helps the learner to make sense of new information which he or she is going to get by relating this new information with something which the learner has already known or the learner has uh, already experienced in the past or maybe at some point of time. And to accomplish this present, the learner with an experience or uh, somehow the uh, knowledge that stimulates their prior knowledge, something uh, new is going to be taught. The learner is also in a position to make connections between what they are learning and what exactly they have already learned or what previous knowledge they were having. When people learn something new, it is best to correlate the new information with the related information or topics which they have already learned in their past. Best learning happens because in this way they can make a sense of the new information. They can also make a proper internalization of the new information if this new information is having some sort of connection with the old information or the past information which they already have got understood. What are the various methods which we can imply for uh, stimulating this recall process of whatever they have learned earlier. We can ask various uh, questions. We can ask the uh, experiences uh, which they have already done. So uh, the, if we ask the students to share their ex previous experiences related to that topic, that can be one of the techniques to make them recall. Asking very relevant and particular questions related to their previous experiences can also be one of the methods. We can also ask about their understanding of previous concepts. Because if they are not in a position to understand those uh, related concepts which are very much important to, to learn the new concept, it will be very much uh, difficult for them to internalize everything new. This is very much important for us to ensure that they understand the previous concepts. We can give them an example of any of those experiences which are similar to what they have learned earlier or what they are going to learn. So even the teacher or the instructor can uh, share some of his or her own experiences so that uh, the child can make a, make a relation uh, that yes this sort of thing has happened to me also so that type of um, techniques or methodologies can be applied so that the stimulation of this recall process of uh, the prior learning can happen in the next step basically we present the stimulus the presentation of the stimulus is done here we present the learner with the new information and for presenting uh, this new information we use the lear learning strategies, the various learning strategies to provide effective and efficient instruction. The entire information or content is organized and divided into meaningful chunks. And uh, uh, then the, these chunks one by one are presented to the learner. We also provide explanations 
and these explanations are at times followed by various type of demonstrations activities and uh, the strategies which are planned at the time of designing the instruction so what can be the various uh, uh, ways in which we can present the information to the learners we can organize our information in a logical and easy to understand manner then we can make the parts of the information a lot of uh, analogies or examples can be accumulated so that we can provide uh, these examples for proper understanding utilization of multiple delivery methods because nowadays we can see that uh, the class is now very diverse we have got various type of learners and also uh, we can uh, have some hardware also with uh, us in the classroom so even we can go for videos some uh, slide shows demonstrations there can be uh, video recordings and even the audio recordings which we popularly called as podcasts and there can be various type of group works which can be designed so we can utilize various delivery methods we can use the variety of uh, resources which can be of uh, multiple types multimedia resources can even be used so that the stimulation of the uh, sense organs various sense, sense organs can be done there can be graphics there can be figures pictures sound a uh, podcast or a video or even a text material which can be used as a resource for the um, teaching learning process as well we can use variety of approaches variety of approaches means we can go for uh, verbal instruction we can go for a, a discussion active learning can happen when we make a discussion we can give some cues in the form of a picture or a visual and then we can ask a lot of things related to this visual cue this type of approach the variety of approaches if we are using all these uh, variety of approaches this suit the people with different learning styles and learning preferences because in in case of a diverse classroom we never know that what exactly will be the best uh, methodology through which i can teach all my learners there can be a learner who is uh, good with the visual uh, style or maybe somebody is an auditory learner somebody is a kinesthetic type of learner so we are not sure about the way which is best for the uh, learner so we can make a variety of approaches applied when we uh, we actually present the uh, the topic or present the stimulus in front of the learner the next step is providing learning guidance here in this step we offer the learning guidance by providing coaching or training on how to learn the skill which is being imparted in due course of this uh, provision of uh, guidance or providing guidance we give various examples and advise uh, various strategies to aid the learners in their uh, learning of the content and uh, we also use a lot of resources which are available in the vicinity and also uh, maybe with the online resources which are nowadays available in the form of open educational resources they can also be used we also provide the guidance in the form of various cues or hints and we can also provide some sort of uh, uh, aids to them which which can be useful for making them understand or remember what they are learning and what further they are going to learn so there can be various ways in which we can provide the learning guidance they can be uh, by the use of uh, mnemonics uh, in the form of cues and prompt towards learning we can nowadays use the uh, various software which are used for concept mapping so with the help of uh, the concept mapping strategies we can allow them to associate one concept with the other and also the relationship between the two concepts and multiple concepts so concept mapping uh, can be another way 
then role playing or uh, visualization of the applications uh, this is also used a lot uh, because here active participation of the learners can be seen we can achieve active participation of the learners then we can also go for uh, the various case studies which uh, which are coming from the real world the case studies which have happened earlier and and those can be informed or those can be actually given to them for reading so that they can actually get something which can be applied to their own learning we can provide various examples illustrations analogies to help the construction of knowledge of the learners there can be various uh, visuals pictures graphics which can allow them to make various type of associations these associations will allow them to understand what is going to be taught and what is already taught so these things are very important to be used by the teacher in due course of this entire teaching learning process the other step is eliciting performance we have to let the learner do something with the newly acquired behavior there is a possibility that a, the learner would have learned a new skill or gained some new knowledge so here this learner has to do something new with this newly acquired behavior skill or knowledge we have to provide them with practice activities to activate the learning process and that is why you can find every single textbook having exercises at the end and uh, nowadays you can also find in between like once a uh, one topic is ending you can find one practice exercise so this activity allows the learner to internalize the new information that that new skill or the new knowledge and also to ensure the correct understanding and application of this new concept skill or knowledge how this can be done what are the ways to activate the learners uh, uh, this uh, processing of uh, the the information there can be various ways we can have the learner do something with the newly acquired behavior so we can plan something which is uh, essentially using that newly acquired behavior we can also have the learner demonstrate the, the skill which uh, he or she has acquired we can have the learner to uh, like making an application of the knowledge to any particular scenario or a case or a situation he or she has to apply that this learned knowledge in that particular case we can ask questions which they have to answer and by answering these questions they can show that whether they have internalized the new knowledge properly or not so there can be applied questions higher order thinking uh, based questions which they have to answer we can ask the learner to demonstrate how to use that particular newly acquired skill or knowledge or the concept we can also ask them or we can make them uh, plan a role play or a skit or a nukkar natak or some sort of activity which can't be completed without the application of that particular skill or knowledge or the content or the concept which is going to give you as an instructor or the teacher the idea that whether whatever is imparted is properly internalized or not so by this eliciting performance the reflection of that what exactly uh, to what extent the learning uh, is uh, happened or how the newly acquired skills are um, uh, like to what extent they are, they have learned those things that can be uh, seen by this eliciting performance event
The next event is providing feedback. So we have seen that the learners have already shown what exactly they have learned. So after the learner attempts to demonstrate their knowledge, we have to provide immediate feedback to this learner on the performance which uh, he or she has presented to assess and facilitate the learning process. This assessment is very, very important. And after assessment, provide, providing the feedback, that is something which is compulsory, essential. And this is also a good time to reinforce any important point or maybe various points. So there can be various corrections which are required. Or there may be very few. But we have to see, we have to make an assessment that whether all the things which you have taught to the learners whether th the things are happening or the acquisition of knowledge is happening in a proper way or not. And on the basis of this assessment, we have to provide them the feedback. And this stage helps the reinforcement of a correct answer. Um, it also gives the guidance uh, to, the, to the teacher that to which degree the learner is requiring the corrections in the tasks which are uh, uh, basically taught to him or her. So it also provides a kind of uh, cue to the teacher that what kind of correction is to be uh, to be done and what exactly is to be given to the learner in the form of the feedback. So then only we can find the learner uh, acquiring the skill or the knowledge in a very proper way. The, the, the behavior is uh, properly carved only if the feedback is provided to the learner at the right time and in the right amount, in the right way. What can be the various tips or the various uh, ways in which we can provide them the feedback? Basically, we can be uh, very positive once we are uh, uh, viewing the performance. We can give them the tips or the feedback with a very objective uh, approach or being very objective that whether they are doing it correctly or incorrectly, that can also be a way. We can also use the first-hand observation. And uh, through the that first-hand observation, we can provide them the feedback. We can deliver the focused and concise feedback on the basis of whatever is observed by us as a teacher. And we can focus on the areas which can be controlled by the student. By making the change in that particular small area, the student can actually control the entire process and the acquisition of that skill, knowledge or uh, content is going to become very precise. So we have to be very careful while providing the feedback. The becoming a good teacher requires the ability of providing good feedback, proper feedback to the learners. Now the next step that is very much related to the earlier step and this step says that assessing of the performance is to be done. And in order to evaluate the effectiveness of the instructional events, we need to administer a test on the learners so that we can determine that uh, whether the expected learning outcomes which we thought of achieving at the end are if they are achieved or not. So we need to make a comparison between the entry level behavior and after some sort of uh, imparting of the instructions, some, some time is now spent. Now we expect the learner to acquire some level of uh, the skills or knowledge or the attainment of concepts. So what we do, we actually compare the entry level behavior with the behavior of uh, which is after the uh, of those um, particular time period once the information is imparted. So this performance which is uh, uh, assessed it should be based on the previously stated objectives. It should be strictly 
checking that whether the objectives are achieved or not. And there are various methods which can be used for assessing the performance uh, of learning of the learners. It can be through a, taking a written test or maybe we can use uh, short questionnaires. We can take uh, uh, a test which in which they have to write a short essay or a long essay or maybe through verbal questioning. And also we can use various uh, pre-formatted measurement tools or we can even create a tool which is based on the topic which is being taught and we can use this uh, uh, tool for checking or taking the uh, test pre-test and post-test kind of thing can be taken and this can be used for checking the level of performance of the learners the last step or the ninth step is enhancing retention and transfer what exactly it means basically as a teacher or as an instructor we have to give the learner various resources that enhance the retention and transfer of knowledge so that they are in a position to uh, to achieve or internalize the new knowledge and enhance their own expertise and for doing this repeated practice with effective feedback can be done can be given and this is this is considered to be the best way we provide repeated uh, feedback we provide a lot of opportunities for practicing then this can be the best way to ensure that people retain information and not only retaining information they can also use this information in, a, in an effective way and what can be the methods for helping the learners to internalize the new knowledge basically these methods can be uh, providing them summarizing or a summary of the content we can even go for uh, uh, asking them to generate various examples they can create mind maps or concept maps this uh, this can also help them recall all those things which they have learned and they can also make a retention of the information if they use uh, uh, to make these concept maps and mind maps they can also create certain outline of whatever they have learned, a kind of a, a flow chart. Uh, they can create various resources or aids. And maybe they can go for creating various type of reference material, which is related to the knowledge which is imparted to them. In this way, they will be actively engaged in the learning process. And making them actively engaged is the best way to, uh, to make them learn something new so this was the ninth step and uh, it shows that how the repetition and practice and provision of the active feedback can be the best way to ensure that the people or the students retain the information and not only retain they can even use this information in an effective uh, way in their lives we have seen all the nine events of instruction given by Ghani let us now see that how, why this uh, theory or this model of Ghani is considered very important and till date it is considered to be a very useful means of providing instruction or constructing instruction. Ghani's theory uh, basically practices a very systematic natured approach, it provides a sequence of events and practical applications and this makes it simple to follow a process to get a desired result the tasks which are provided here seem to follow a logical order and provide a blueprint for the individuals who are learning the task to feel very very confident in applying a step and achieving a desired outcome which is stipulated in the beginning itself we can also adjust to reach the different learning modalities uh, by the help of uh, the steps which are uh, used here in this approach. So adjustment in the steps can be done. Like uh, we can go for making the step which is at the fourth place, even at the third place and vice versa. And Ghani's theory can also be adapted to suit the needs of varied learners. The 
learners of diverse nature. So these are few of those features which make this theory or the model very useful even in the present situation. It also has some of the lacuna. The steps which are uh, used here in this theory require a lot of guided assistance when teaching of new skills is happening. If there are steps that require critical thinking, where the outcome could go more than one way, there may be some confusion in teaching learning of those steps. So this is somehow a little uh, kind of lacuna. And there is not a lot of independent or unassisted exploration which can be seen. Always some sort of guidance or the intervention of the teacher or the instructor is required. This can possibly create a learner that is not likely to explore ways of problem solving. And in this way, creating a learner that is very dependent on guided information can be one of the disadvantages because uh, every time the learner is requiring some sort of guidance from the teacher. Some instructional designers see this approach as a, um, a little bit boring and less challenging method of instructional designing. And this is just because very much uh, intervention of the teacher is, uh, is there. It, it is not very much self-guiding. The mm -hmm. guidance from outside or the assistance of the teacher is seen instrumental in due course of the conduction of this method. So this is somehow a few of those lacuna which can be seen in this, this particular method given by Ghani. So we have seen that uh, using Ghani's nine events of instruction and even the adaptive model, uh, the learners and also the teachers can connect with the students in a way that is suitable to their learning styles in any given circumstance. And in this manner, the students achieve more and more learning outcomes. Optimal uh, uh, achievement of the learning outcomes is done and they can become true subject matter experts or the uh, the content which they are acquiring can be acquired in the true sense. A very important factor which is related to Ghani's model is its flexibility. You can see that even the uh, the various factors which are used in Ghani's model can be applied in Bloom's taxonomy and vice versa can also be done. And the motive is to gain a well acquainted learner who actually uh, is in a position to acquire all the skills and knowledge which are stipulated, the learning outcomes uh, are the basis which are stipulated in the beginning. So the end product is seen to be more important than the individual parts. So in this way, we can see that uh, the nine events of instruction given by Robert Ghani are very important in the, in the process of imparting instructions to the learners in the teaching learning process. So now we have reached to the end of the session. Uh, here we have seen that Robert Ghani, he is uh, considered to be the revolutionary in the process of instruction or uh, the process of instructional designing. And he belongs to the World War II era. He is known for uh, creating this systematic approach, uh, which has got uh, a lot of importance. And it is often referred to the uh, to as the Ghani's assumption. And uh, he was considered to be the pioneer of educational instruction. And why he was considered to be the pioneer? Because the technique which he has devised is somehow very, very important for the instructional process. The general idea which seems familiar today even is the different things are best learned using different methods. This is the key of or essence of Ghani's uh, methodology. So Ghani's nine events of instruction are a perfect example of how to implement this concept where we can go for 
the learning which can be best imparted by the means and ways of utilization of different things and using this adaptive model teachers can connect with their students in a way that is suitable to their uh, diverse learning styles in any of the given circumstances so we have seen the important features related to the nine events in detail we have also seen all the uh, best points and all those worst points basically the advantages and the disadvantages and at the end we have concluded that this theory is very much relevant maybe in today's scenario also if it is conducted in a proper way so these are few of those references and suggested further readings which were used for the development of this session you can also go ahead and learn more about the contributions of gane and all those strategies which he has developed uh, which is going to be path breaking when we try to make the process of instruction more worthy so this was all for today we will meet with each other in another session another time thank you so much dear learners you are watching a video related to emerging technologies and issues in educational technology and in this lecture we discuss robert gane's nine events of instruction this video lecture was recorded by faculty at home during the home bound situation of covid-19 pandemic using minimal technical resources technical errors if any are unintentional and may please be ignored for any queries with regard to this lecture or broadcast kindly send your email to techsupport@dth.ac.in thank you so much